Encanto is a movie that came out on November 24th this year, but has come out on Disney Plus this Friday. Because I didn't have a chance to see it last month, I figured now is the perfect time to give it a shot anyways. Now, stay with me here, because I did like Encanto, but it left me with a lot to be desired. It's not just a spoiled claim I'm making. No, I do genuinely feel that it lays great groundwork, and then, eh, this movie is an odd one. Hello, fellow Disney Plus watcher, I'm excited to talk about Disney Plus with you today. So, just a fair warning here, I do feel the need to discuss spoilers. If you haven't seen Encanto yet, please come back later. Or if you just don't care, that's perfectly fine too. Ready? Great. Let me start by saying, and this is something that is almost mandatory to talk about at this point, yeah, the animation is absolutely fantastic. Not only because it's colorful, vibrant, but look at this old lady's hand. What the hell? Do you see the detail? I'm blown away. The animation is great. And honestly, there's a scene in this movie with a lot of sand. I don't like sand. Well, I do. I can't remember sand ever looking so damn good in an animated movie. Just look at this, it's so realistic. I can't believe we made it to this point in time where animation is just so beautifully real. Another thing that is absolutely great about this movie is the setup and the creative exploration of the magic and the magical house itself. So to quickly recap, the movie is about this girl Mirabel growing up within a family blessed with a miracle. Every member of the family gets a magical gift when they're old enough, whether it's super strength, the ability to grow flowers or being able to talk to animals, nothing is too crazy for the family Madrigal, except for Mirabel. She, she's the only one who didn't get a gift and she feels left out and the black sheep of the family. But when the candle that gives the family their magic is starting to fade away and cracks start to emerge in the, in the fabric of the house, Mirabel feels responsible and goes on a quest to find out what is wrong with the spark that gives her family their gifts. I say on a quest, but not really. I'll get to that. The reason the movie, in my opinion, had potential to become a Disney classic in the first half, I love the premise, I do, and I was all in on the main character in the first half of this movie. I loved it. More than enough attention was given to how Mirabel feels about her place in the family and her feeling of responsibility is it's really well motivated by all the shit she has to take from her grandmother i love the relationship between them and that house it's a character on its own that the house itself in a great way it interacts with the characters it puts people back in their place when they're not supposed to go somewhere it's really a character in every sense of the word. It kind of reminded me of the movie Monster House. I don't know if you know that movie. I, I don't know why. I guess that was just a movie I watched multiple times as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Th there's some nice humor also in the movie, especially when, when this house seems to have an opinion on what is happening between characters or in the family. Again, the house's character is a delight. There's not a lot of humor in the movie, and I guess it could use a little more. I guess so. Especially after the first act, like the first third of the movie. But, but that's not my big problem with Encanto. The songs in the movie are also pretty cool overall. Some are catchy, some not really. They work best when they're highlighting a character and not explaining the story. Because the very first song in this movie is pretty meh in my opinion. The lyrics do not flow well. There is a lot of exposition in the lyrics. It sounded like it was a real challenge to cram all this exposition and story into this first song of the movie. So no, I liked the musical aspect in Encanto and it, 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 it did a lot for supporting characters sometimes, but that opening song was pretty bad for my taste. The big glaring problem for me is Encanto's missed potential that was obviously right there in front of it. And the short cut it makes to get to a conclusion, it didn't really feel like a full journey. It really didn't. Now, I want to explain myself a bit more with this three-act structure graph. And I know, this shouldn't be a Bible or something. But the movie follows this structure for the most part and then skips ahead. So there's an awesome twist in the movie that takes the character to the low point of the story. So Mirabel had her whole quest. Bruno showed her that a hug with her sister would get her to save the magic, which we're gonna talk about that briefly too. But Mirabel has her little song and dance with her sister. When her grandmother, Abuela, comes in and tries to convince Mirabel, she's the whole reason the magic is fading. And, and then we get a great twist. The overprotective and dogmatic mother, grandmother, sorry, is actually the one who destroys the magic without her even knowing. At this point, we're at the key revelation too. And just for reference, Mirabel discovering the shattered pieces of glass and seeing herself in it is key revelation number one. It's just, it's just this Colombian influence. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. Key revelation one. I don't want to sound like a know-it-all here, but up until the all is lost moments, like the low point, this movie fits perfectly into this structure. And that, it, that, that is not a coincidence. This model is like the science of being engaged in a movie, especially if it has to be family friendly and enjoyable for all ages like Disney. But 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 I digress. I hope you're following me here. I hope you do. So, the second revelation is Mirabel figuring out the miracle is dying because of you, Abuela, the grandmother. You're the one outcasting Bruno and I'm, I'm never good enough for you, am I? It's just all my fault, but it's actually you. So, that's, that's a great change of dynamic. Immediately after, the whole house breaks down and everyone loses their powers. No more super strength, no more creating flowers, no more f flashy stuff, no more anything. Everybody's sad. Let's check the model. Ah, right after the key revelation, we have the fall and the all is lost moment, the low point. But this is where the movie broke down for me. The very next thing that happens is Abuela basically having a heart to heart with Mirabel, where she admits, yeah, I lost sight of what the real magic is. And you were right. We, 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 we get some extra backstory, but wait, 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 wait. It really felt like there was a whole section missing. You see what is happening here with this movie? The road home slash resolution comes immediately after the all is lost moment. Not any glimmer of hope, hero stand or resurrection. And you know, it's not that after I saw this movie, I thought to myself, hmm, hey, let's look for inconsistencies within the three act structure, do that. But I, I felt dramatic points in the story missing while I was watching it. I was like, wait, wait are we here? Are we already going? Going back home? Are we already? I, I felt that. I, I felt the story skipping through a lot while I was watching it, and I'm finding confirmation in the chart. Something crazy is unfolding on the Bitcoin charts today for the Bitcoin price. <laughs> That's my point. I'm not making this up as I go along. This is really a problem, I think. The movie kind of sets Abuela up as this newfound and unexpected villain. And for Mirabel, there's now so much to overcome. The whole village is against her because it seems like she's the one that caused all this. The, the, the point that we're, we're at from here all the pieces are in place to make this movie an instant classic because I was so engaged up until that point. We still have the sister in the story. That totally is forgotten about after the middle section. She was just underdeveloped also. When the plot point was introduced where Mirabel was now tasked uh, to uh, giving her sister a hug, the only thing we really got out of that was a musical number where they become best friends again. Yes, we, we get some hints in the first act that, that she doesn't really like Mirabel, but she could have been an antagonist next to Abuela and really tell this story about sisterhood, uh, um, kind of like in Frozen. It could have been an extra thing. It's always a bit tricky to talk about what could have been because you still want to judge the movie for what it is. But I hope I explain well enough why I believe the movie missed a few beats. Like a potential third act could have been the mother leaving the town through the mountains and going on the quest to expose the whole family. Like within the introduction of the story, we are told this family protects themselves from the outside world. Why not have that premise become part of the conclusion? Tie everything back together. Then we truly have an event where Mirabel can prove to the whole town, to, to her whole family, I mean, she's a worthy part of the family. Instead of Abuela just saying, sorry, you were right, you're part of the family again. <laughs> this movie skips ahead. This movie kind of ruins the whole build up a bit. Uh, all the pieces were in place. A story about two sisters at odds. A story about an overprotective grandmother who casts out one of her children. The story of a small family town protected from the outside world and then exposed. The ingredients are there but doesn't go there. All the pieces were in place but this movie drops everything after two acts and it goes easy on it. It just goes, let's talk it out and end this thing. This movie doesn't have three acts, it has 2.2 acts or something. First two acts, then at the low point of the story an ending. Like immediately after, I mean. Such a bummer. It's the idea of this movie movie, the message is pretty good. Real magic is from within, not from some external miracle candle thing. Now why the actual Ugh, is everyone pointlessly getting their powers back after the house is rebuilt? That was also a stupid thing. The film just massacred its own message just so it can have some nice eye candy and show the fun quirky powers once again. It's so interesting how this movie derails itself completely. It's not because I stared at the three act structure chart and thought, hmm, maybe there's something not right with this movie. No, no, no. no, it just felt very weird how it all wrapped up and I found confirmation on the Bitcoin charts. It makes sense why I felt 
felt this way. But maybe you think I'm overreacting. Maybe you think, wow, this movie was awesome. And I think it was, it had beautiful things in it. Maybe you're way more easy on this movie and I'm just overly thinking this, uh, this through. But let me know if I'm going crazy or if you think I have a point. I don't know. This is just my analysis. I'm thinking about wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm curious, what did you think of Encanto? I, I really want to know. Be sure to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget, if you like discussing Disney Plus content, make sure to hit that mysterious red button. And if you're interested in my thoughts on the short film that preceded this movie, Far From the Tree, I also saw that thing and I really recommend that. Did you like this video? Then there's a button to express that. Thank you so much. For now, have a wonderful day and see ya.